Hi guys, you are watching Hondora, your personal travel explorer. Turkish and Mughal rule in the Indian subcontinent also introduced Central Asian and Persian styles of Islamic architecture in the region and by the late 12th century, early monuments in this style were appearing in and around Delhi, the capital of Delhi Sultanate. North India was successively ruled by foreign dynasties in the coming centuries giving rise to the Indo-Islamic architecture. It all began with the construction of the Qutub Minar in 1192 AD by Qutubuddin Abak of the slave dynasty. One of the most magnificent tombs built in Delhi during the Mughal rule, the Humayun's tomb is an excellent example of Persian architecture. Come, let us explore this monument. The Humayun's tomb served as an early example for other Mughal tombs which were built over time such as the Akbar's tomb in Sikandra, the tomb of Giyasuddin Tughlaq at Tughlaqabad, the tomb of Sikandar Lodi in the Lodi Gardens and the Taj Mahal. In Humayun's tomb one can see architectural features which over time went on to become important component of Mughal architecture such as its octagonal shape and its high central arch. Constructed out of red sandstone, the Humayu's tomb was the first ever garden-style tomb to be constructed in India. This is the Bu Halima Gate. This grand gateway led to the tomb garden of Bu Halima of which not much is known. The facade of the gateway is chamfered and remnants of tile work can still be seen. This is the Arab Ki Sarai Gate. This 14 meter high gateway led to the walled enclosure which housed the Persian craftsmen who came here for the building of Humayu's tomb. Red sandstone and white marble inlay work add a striking touch to the gateway. The projecting jharokas still display remnants of the glazed ceramic tiles. The Humayun's tomb was declared as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the year 1993. The high rubble built enclosure is entered through two lofty double storied gateways on the west and south. This is the west gate. It is 16 meters high with rooms on either side of the passage and small courtyards on the upper floors. It has been ornamented with six sided stars.
the Humayun storm was commissioned by his widow Hamida Banu Begum and designed by Mirak Mirza Giyas and his son Sayyid Muhammad Persian architects chosen by her construction began in 1565 and was completed in 1572 it costed 1.5 million rupees paid entirely by the empress the tomb built of rubble masonry and red sandstone uses white marble as a cladding material and also for the flooring jalis door frames chajjas and for the main dome it stands on a vaulted terrace 8 meters high and spread over an area of 12000 square meters it is essentially square in design though chamfered on the edges to appear octagonal to prepare ground for the design of the interior structure the plinth made with rubble core has 56 cells all around and houses over 100 grave stones the entire base structure is on a raised platform Inspired by Persian architecture, the tomb reaches a height of 47 meters and is 91 meters wide and was the first Indian building to use the Persian double dome on a high neck drum and measures 42.5 meters and is topped by 6 meters high brass finial ending in a crescent. The double layer dome has its outer layer which supports the white marble exterior. while the inner part gives shape to the cavernous interior volume as a contrast to the pure white exterior dome rest of the building is made up of red sandstone with white and black marble and yellow sandstone detailing The symmetrical and simple design on the exterior is in sharp contrast with the complex interior floor plan of inner chambers which is a square ninefold plan where eight two-storied vaulted chambers radiate from the central double high domed chamber. It can be entered through an imposing entrance on the south which is slightly recessed while the other sides are covered with intricate jalis with stone lattice work. Underneath this white dome in a dome chamber lies the central burial chamber containing a single cenotaph that of the second Mughal emperor Humayun aligned on the north south axis as per Islamic tradition wherein the head is placed to the north while the face is turned sideways towards Mecca the real burial chamber of the emperor however lies further away in an underground chamber exactly beneath the upper cenotaph accessible through a separate passage outside the main structure 
which remains mostly closed to visiting public. The main chamber also carries the symbolic element, a mehrab design over the central marble jali facing Mecca in the west. This chamber with high ceiling is then encompassed by four main octagonal chambers on two floors, set at the diagonals with arch lobbies leading to them and also connecting them. Plus there are four auxiliary chambers in between suggesting that the tomb was built as a dynastic mausoleum. These smaller chambers contain cenotaphs of other members of the Mughal royal family. Prominent among them are cenotaphs of Hamida Begum herself. Cenotaph of Empress Bega Begum and also Dara Shiko, great great grandson of Humayu and son of later Emperor Shah Jahan, as well as numerous other subsequent Mughals, including Emperor Jahandar Shah, Farooq Siyar, Rafi ul Darjat, Rafi ud Daulat, Muhammad Kam Baksh, and Alamgir II. In all, there are over 100 graves within the entire complex. Since the graves are not inscribed, their identification remains uncertain. While the main tomb took over 8 years to build, it was also placed in center of a 30-acre Jabag, a Persian-style garden with quadrilateral layout and was the first of its kind in the South Asian region. The highly geometrical and enclosed Paradise Garden is divided into four squares by paved walkways and two bisecting central water channels. Each of the four squares is further divided into smaller squares with pathways, creating into a 36 squares in all, a design typical of later Mughal gardens. The entire tomb and the garden is enclosed within high rubble walls on three sides. The fourth side was meant to be the river Yamuna, which has since shifted course away from the structure. This is the South Gate, the royal entrance to the tomb complex. This grand gateway has walls projecting outwards to create a welcoming entrance court. The ground floor comprises a series of rooms and the upper floor features a central court with rooms on the north and south.
This is the tomb complex of Isa Khan Niazi, an Afghan noble in Sher Shah Suri's court of the Suri dynasty who fought against the Mughals. It was constructed in 1547 AD. The octagonal tomb is positioned within an octagonal garden which was built during his own lifetime and the reign of Islam Shah Suri, son of Sher Shah. It later served as a burial place for the entire family of Isa Khan. The octagonal tomb bears a striking resemblance to other tombs of the Su dynasty monuments in the Lodi Gardens in Delhi. On the western side of the Isa Khan tomb lies a three-bay white mosque in red sandstone built by Isa Khan Niazi. Other videos on exciting travel locations and monuments are also available on this channel. Do explore these videos and also do like, share and subscribe this channel.